Hello YouTube, this is Scott with Linux for today. I've got some uh, tips for you here today. Uh, this package right here is called Webmin, and you may or may not have ever heard of it before, but uh, that's okay. Basically what this is, is it is a web-based system administration web UI. And uh, it actually works out very well. Uh, this is um, part of the way uh, I learned how to do what I know how to do. And uh, way back in the day when Webmin was really kind of young, uh, I used this to uh, monitor and, and change things around because I didn't, I really didn't know at the time exactly what I was doing on the command line or I didn't know how to perform that specific task but still needed to do it. And this, this kind of helps uh, fill in that gap. Um, basically what it does though is it, it is a, uh, it's a, it's a system tool that allows you to control multiple aspects of your computer um, ideally remotely uh, but you can configure this to where it only works locally uh, anyway you just go to webmin.com and you download the appropriate package like you see over here whether you're doing an RPM, a Debian package or, or whatever um, and just download the package I've already done so here uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just going to go ahead and open it. Uh, I don't want it to open. I want it to open with GW. There we go. Let's change that default real quick. There we go. go ahead and close that. All right. So basically, what we're doing is we're just going to install this. It wants your root password. If I can remember it. <laughs> and this might take a couple seconds. It's a fairly fairly comprehensive um, package here. Go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, now this takes several minutes to uh, uh, install, so I have cut a good portion out of it. So if, if you uh, do this and, and it looks like it's hanging up and, and so forth, just give it a little bit of time because it, uh, it does take a while. All right, now if you notice in here where it says after installation, enter the URL HTTPS colon slash slash localhost colon uh, 10,000. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring our web browser back over here. Okay, I'm going to open up a new window, and we're going to go to that website. Now, what it does is it creates an SSH um, to HTTPS. It creates its own certificate. That's what this thing is complaining about because it's, it's untrusted. That's okay. We're on localhost. It's on your own machine. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, in Firefox, you can go in here and add the exception. Now what you want to do here is you want to enter your root username and your root password. Not a sudo user, the root user itself. And since it's localhost, I just go ahead and remember it all the time. Yes, yeah, so we're going to remember the password. All right, and basically what it does is it looks like this. On this window here, it'll show you your, your system, the address, what you have installed, the webmin version, how long it's been up, which kernel you're running, that kind of thing there, your processor, and then it lists all your memory and so on. And then down here, it shows you how many packages need to be updated. Uh, over here, it, it uh, on the left-hand side, it's very comprehensive. And it'll take you a while to get used to this, but um, you can use this to... Uh, do your shutdowns and, and you know all your scripts add users and groups um, if you have mail set up on your, your system you can you know check your mail through this there's all kinds of stuff in here uh, monitor and, and change your networking around there's there's literally all kinds of stuff that you can do uh, monitor servers like web servers and things like that so uh, that is Webmin in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to go through here and show you a few things here. Uh, for Webmin itself, let's see here. We can do uh, you can do scheduling your backups. You can change the language and the theme. 
of Webmin itself, um, access some of the logs, change the configuration around whether you want it to start at boot up or not, um, that kind of thing. If you have more than one server, you can actually link these together, uh, which I've never really done, so don't ask me how to do it. I've never had a need to do it. Um, and then this here is for Webmin users itself. So if you want to add yourself to here um, and give yourself administrative privileges, you can as far as on this web interface. The system is where the, the system users are, like down here, users and groups. This is a list of all the groups that are currently on your system. Like uh, there's me right there. Uh, and you can go in and you can edit things about yourself, uh, reset your password, you can change groups around, uh, that kind of thing there. If you re remember though, if, if you change groups, like if I wanted to add myself to like the root group or whatever, uh, you just highlight that and click the, the left arrow or the right arrow over. But uh, if you do that, you have to remember you have to log out and log back in so Bash can read the groups file. Um, you can set up boot up and shut down. You can manage um, services from in here. This like, Again, this is like really, really comprehensive. Is that why it takes so long to install all this stuff? And uh, you, this is basically like your, your Windows uh, services kind of thing, which is what SystemD is really supposed to do. Um, you can manage disks and networking systems. You can um, turn on um, you can manage uh, quotas and that kind of thing there. You can set up um, log file rotations. You can set up cron jobs. Uh, if you don't know what a cron job is, basically what it is 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 a um, you can set up on a on the time schedule scripts to do specific tasks. Like whether you want it to empty your cache at a certain time of day, you can do that kind of that kind of stuff there. Um, I'm not going to really go into to it really. You can update your packages. This gives you a list of everything that needs to be updated so you can just check mark that and click update packages and then install now and it goes through and it, and it updates your packages um, just like as if you, just as if you had a like a regular terminal window open like this right here. Go ahead and let that finish. And I'm just scrolling down with my down arrow, just holding it in place, because it won't automatically scroll. This has been around for several years, by the way, so it's a it's a very mature product. Um, I use it exclusively on all of my uh, all of my uh, remote remote servers, like LinuxForToday.com. I ho I do all my own hosting and stuff. And I use this uh, basically in the same way. And system refresh, that should go away now. There you go. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here. If you have like a patchy web server or whatever, it'll show up here. Uh, like down here in the unused modules, it'll list all the modules that it comes with that are currently not being used. Like there's Apache right there because I don't, I don't have Apache installed. I don't have disk quotas set up or anything like that because uh, this is my home computer I don't need to set all that stuff up but uh, anyway that is a uh, webmin and uh, as usual if you like these videos and would like to see more make sure you click like and subscribe